Singularity near the military industrial complex. The truth is out there. The seven mountains of the influencers of culture. To be as gods, you know, had a pulse of propaganda. From a mostly secure, undisclosed split level location on a cul de sac somewhere in the heartland of America, this is a view from the bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. One of the most dangerous trends to evangelical Christianity in America today may be sitting on the shelf of your local Christian bookstore. Welcome to A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Our guest today is going to talk about a a book that just recently released a 10th anniversary expanded edition uh, 10 years after its publication. It is still the number one bestseller among Christian devotionals at Amazon.com. It's the number one bestseller in the worship and devotion category and number 28 still among all books, bearing in mind that Amazon is a secular Retailer. It has spawned a number of products. Uh, there's the kids' edition, the women's edition, the teen edition, the perpetual calendar, the Bible storybook edition, and the devotional Bible. I'm talking about the book Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. Our guest is a freelance writer and community social worker who was formerly involved with the New Age movement, which may make him especially sensitive to the topic of uh, this discussion. He's the author of six books. His most recent is Another Jesus Calling, How False Christs Are Entering the Church Through Contemplative Prayer. It is our honor to welcome Warren B. Smith to the program. Warren, thank you for joining us today. Thanks. It's really good to be with you. For people who are not familiar with the book, and there are probably only about 16 of us in the country, uh, what is Jesus Calling? Jesus Calling is a, it's a so-called devotional book, a woman by the name of Sarah Young um, read a New Age book called God Calling uh, a number of years back and was inspired by this book. That's what is so amazing to me is most people that are enthralled by Jesus Calling don't realize that Sarah Young, the author of Jesus Calling, was inspired by a channeled New Age book. And that's not just my opinion. The Encyclopedia of New Age Beliefs, published by Christian publisher Harvest House, has um, a chapter on channeling, and the authors uh, of the book, two apologists, John Weldon and John Ankerberg, very clearly state that this is an impersonation of Christ, this God Calling book that Sarah Young read and said that this New Age book was a treasure to her, and it inspired her to write Jesus Calling. So right off the bat, you know, that should be a real warning to anybody that uh, the Jesus, that these two women in England who uh, channeled God Calling, uh, they basically just said that this was Jesus Christ, and they were getting messages from him, wrote them down, and some of the messages are straight New Age, and we can talk about that. But there should have been some kind of a, a discernment button that went off for Sarah Young, but it didn't. So she took down everything that this quote-unquote Jesus told her, and then arranged it in the form of a devotional. It's like a 365-day devotional. And the messages that she received, quote-unquote messages that she received from, quote-unquote, Jesus, uh, are are the substance of this devotional. Hmm. And some of the messages that she received are quite disturbing uh, to someone, especially like myself, who came out of the New Age movement. And, you know, maybe, Derek, we should just state for the record that for people who aren't familiar with the New Age, the New Age... Bottom line, and this this permeates every part of the New Age, the bottom line, foundational teaching, states that God is in everyone and everything. We are all one, oneness, because God is in everyone and everything. When the New Age talks about atonement, it's at one oneness. Uh. God, God in everyone and everything. And unfortunately, Sir Young, uh, I guess, you know, like some of us that went into the New Age, we were you know, not very well versed in the Bible, and we didn't know about a deceptive spirit world, and she just kind of assumed that what she was hearing was Jesus Christ. And uh, clearly, from some of the messages that she got, it it is not Jesus Christ. And I felt led to write the book because um, the statistics that you just described about the book, I mean, this has been, her book has been out for 10 years. It's doubled in sales just about every year. And it's just way up there, high, you know, sold, I think, by now probably um, 
upwards of uh, do you have the statistic there? I mean, it changes all the time, but I mean, I, I, to, yeah, I, million, I think you know. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll put it in the, in the concluding remarks of the, of the program. I I did see it just a, a few weeks ago. I was eating uh, at a uh, you know before we relocated from Illinois to Missouri was at a uh, an Amish restaurant, an Amish owned restaurant in East Central Illinois, and it was uh, you know several different editions on display there. They also had the leather-bound uh, special edition uh, for sale at this uh, this Amish place. Um, just to define a term, uh, channeling is, is hearing messages from the spirit realm, correct? Yeah, it's, uh, it's also called spiritual dictation. It's one of seducing spirit. First Timothy 4.1, you know, uh, Paul warns spirits speaketh expressly, then the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. That's exactly what Sarah Young is doing. She's she's channeling. She she may call it, you know, whatever she calls it and put it in Christian language, but unfortunately she's being very deceived. And, you know, just to hook back into the God and everyone thing, I just want to point out that on uh, July 8th devotion in her book on page 199, uh, she has Jesus saying, I am above all as well as in all. Hmm. So there's there's the, the New Age link right there, uh, the bottom line, the foundational teaching of, of the New Age. So um, there's just a number of things here that should um, alert people if they're, you know, caring at all about truth and, and about being discerning. And uh, what I did in my book is I, I laid out why God calling was a problem. I, I put 10 concerns about God calling. Uh, and then I had 20 concerns about Sarah Young's book, Jesus Calling. And uh, we can we can certainly uh, go through some of those uh, if, you, if you'd like. Well, yeah, because I'd like to hear uh, you know th- those listening to the program, and there are probably many who have read the book. In fact, th- this conversation was prompted by um, a comment from a, a very good friend of mine, um, a gentleman who's educated. He has a Ph.D. He is uh, very active in a, a fundamentally sound church as a uh, uh, Sunday school teacher, as a, an elder, lay leader, uh, literally uh, mentored thousands and thousands of young people uh, through a career in, in education, uh, that he was using Jesus Calling as his devotional. And wow. uh, Did so, you talk to him about the book? Or, uh, well, to be honest, I didn't really know enough about it at that point to to call okay. attention to it. I only know that uh, I had seen the uh, release at uh, LighthouseTrailsResearch.com uh, uh, about your book, and that's when I got in contact with you last fall, or, or over the winter, actually. And um, th- those who, who hear this might say, okay, well, she, she said that Jesus uh, told her that he is in all. Maybe that was just a misunderstanding. Maybe that was just a, 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 a bad turn of phrase. How else in the book Jesus Calling uh, does the Jesus, in air quotes, that Sarah Young hears um, contradict the Jesus of the Bible? Well, um, just to, to go right off of what you just said, uh, Sarah Young explicitly said in her original writings of Jesus, the original editions of Jesus Calling, which were out there for like nine years, she said, the practice of listening to God has increased my intimacy with him more than any other spiritual discipline. So I want to share some of the messages I have received. The messages that follow address that felt need. Unfortunately... Thomas Nelson, our publisher, is now removing a lot of the material that we've critiqued. Um, And when I say unfortunately, it's because many people will not know that uh, what Thomas Nelson and Sarah Young are doing right now is very similar to what uh, happened with Nixon's Watergate tapes, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the famous 18 and a half minutes that was suddenly missing. I mentioned God Calling had inspired her, the channel New Age book God Calling had inspired her to write Jesus Calling, all references to God calling have been deleted from recent editions <laughs> of her book. Gone, you know, vanished. No explanation, no apology, no nothing. Now, I just mentioned that she said she wanted to share some of the messages. She said some of the messages I've received, the messages that follow. The new edition says, The practice of being still in God's presence has increased my intimacy with him more than any other spiritual d- Discipline, so I want to share some of the writings I have gleaned from these quiet moments. The devotions that follow address that felt need. So the messages have been very uh, quickly and, and not so subtly shifted into devotions that she's gleaning, with, and now with her Bible open. So they're switching gears. Instead of her 
receiving messages directly from Jesus. Now it's what she's feeling and what she's getting in her devotions. Um, it's it's really sad. I mean, here's another example. She says, these messages are meant to be read slowly, preferably in a quiet place. The new edition says the devotions in this book are meant to be read slowly. I see. So I happen to notice in the kids' version, 365 devotions for kids, uh, she actually gave herself away. She said, since then I've practiced listening a lot. Usually I write his messages in a notebook, but sometimes I just spend time with him for a while and write nothing. The devotions in this book are some of the messages I have received. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know, that's what's happening. They're changing things. Um, they're concerned, I think, because we did a booklet at uh, Lighthouse Trails, uh, and it can do, you know, Lighthouse Trails Publishing would be the place that people could go to get this material. It's called Changing Jesus Calling, Damage Control for a False Christ. And it shows the specific ways that the the publisher and the author are manipulating and changing what she originally wrote with no explanation. Hmm. Let me me just give a few examples of um, some of the problems that I found. Um, On January 28th and also on October 15th, Sarah Young's Jesus seriously contradicts the true Jesus Christ regarding the difference between Matthew 28, 20 and Acts 1, 6 to 9. Specifically, her Jesus says, I am with you always. These were the last words I spoke before ascending into heaven. Well, Derek, these weren't the last words. The, the, <laughs> the last words that Jesus spoke were, were in Acts 1. Right, yeah. When, when he was on the Mount of Olives with the disciples, this other, this I am with you who always was on a mount in Galilee. And I think the proof um, that they had a problem here is because they've also removed this from their, from their recent editions. No longer will you, you you're not going to see these were the last words I spoke before ascending into heaven. It just says, after my resurrection. So that's pretty serious. We've got Sir Young receiving unbiblical information from someone purporting to be Jesus and then removing it when they realized that that was contradicting the actual Bible. Hmm. What's amazing, and you, I think you mentioned this in your introduction, she actually has a Sarah Young uh, Jesus Calling devotional Bible, and this is in that Bible. And she actually says that because her messages are you know, from Jesus and they are inerrant, they, they belong in the Bible. It's a, it's a very uh, amazing statement that she makes where she's got 250 of these messages in a Bible. And there's a kid's version. And I was uh, at a local Christian bookstore recently. Uh, there was like two shelves of this big orange uh, Jesus Calling for Kids. Hmm. And Sarah Young's most recent book, uh, one, or one of her most recent books, Jesus Today, they had them arranged in a real strange configuration right in the middle of the floor. And I, I counted them almost exactly, and there were over 300 copies. And there was a whole Sarah Young section. As you walk in the bookstore, you no longer see prophecy, Christian living, Bibles. What you see is Sarah Young and all these books that she's done. She has become a multimillionaire channeling a false Christ. It's really a sad phenomenon. And I'm really praying that she will, instead of just changing material, she'll come to terms and really, you know, try to examine whether maybe she's hearing from another Jesus. And if she was to do that and to warn people, it would be a very powerful, almost Apostle Paul-like warning when Paul came out of, you know, what he was doing. He was involved with the killing of Christians, and and he had that uh, famous encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. Um, Sarah Young's in a position to really help people clear up their misunderstandings, the things that she's gotten involved in. Mm. Let me give a couple other examples. Um, Her Jesus uh, actually completely contradicts the sober warnings of the true Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, when he states, the future is a phantom seeking to spook you. Laugh at the future. Wow, Derek. You know, that's not what I read in my Bible. I mean, (laughs) we don't laugh at the future. Rodney Howard Brown and his holy laughter campaign back at that so-called Toronto Blessing, you know, that almost ties in with what she's saying, which is somehow, you know, we're to laugh at the future. The book of Revelation, Matthew 24, um, that is not at all what we're to do. We're to, we're, to be, we're to watch and pray. There's some incredible deception coming down. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 3 to 5, when he was asked, what will be the sign of your return and the end of the world? He said, 
Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that Sarah Young's Jesus is one of those that Jesus, the the true Jesus Christ, was warning about. So um, I guess there are a few others that just stick out in my mind. Um, On the Christmas devotion, the 1225, her Jesus says, try to imagine what I gave up when I came into the world as a baby. I set aside my glory so that I could identify with mankind. I accepted the limitations of infancy under the most appalling conditions, a filthy stable. That was a dark night for me. When I read it to my yeah. wife, she said, well, I think I know who it was a dark night for, the night of Jesus' birth. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the angels were, were singing and, and led the shepherds to the stable, and they, they, they rejoiced. Absolutely. And, and the thing that's preposterous is, you know, Jesus is like just barely out of the womb, and he's already complaining. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, that just doesn't jibe. You know, if you look at Philippians, you know, we're, we're just not to, to do that. You know, we're not—there's not, he, he, nothing at all in Scripture to indicate that Jesus complained. One of the other things is, is that this book is filled with flattery. Um, and flattery is not something that characterized Jesus's no. ministry at all. Let me read you some of the things that, that Sarah Young's Jesus said. And one of the things I want to say is that you couldn't be more deceived than I was when I was in the New Age. Uh, I'm not coming from a place of, I mean, I know how easy it is. I had a ball of light that manifested over my head in a psychic reading, Mm. and I was told that I had a lot of help on the other side, and I just went right into it. And there's a spiritual influence that comes with this book. People feel good when they read it, but they have to understand that there's a spiritual thrust that comes from the spirit world that makes people feel good. And here's some of the flattery that, that her Jesus says. And these are scattered throughout the book. And so when they, when they are introduced, it, it isn't overwhelming. But when you put them together, you have to ask yourself, is this really the true Jesus Christ? He says, let me control your mind. My main work is to clear out debris and clutter, making room for my spirit to take full possession. Hmm. Sit, sit quietly in my presence, letting my thoughts reprogram your thinking. Come to me with your defenses down, ready to be blessed and filled with my presence. Well, you know, come to me with your defenses down is kind of like the opposite of Ephesians 6, you know, 10 through 14. Put on the full armor of God right, and right. fast against the wiles of the devil. We're not to just walk around with our defenses down and just because a voice says that it's Jesus. I followed A Course in Miracles, which was reputedly new revelation from Jesus Christ. It's the book that Oprah Winfrey has pushed for over 20 years. Right. The Jesus, the Jesus of A Course in Miracles says the journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. A slain Christ has no meaning. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. There's no sin. I mean, it's preposterous what I believed at that time. That's what Oprah is pushing right now. There are false Christs that are coming into people's lives, and people are not testing the spirits. Mm. Just a few more of these flattering things. Your relationship with me is meant to be vibrant and challenging as I invade more and more areas in your life. While you relax in my presence, I'm molding your mind and clean, cleansing your heart. I have taken up residence within you. I mean, these are just, you know, clearly, if this is not the Lord, these are hugely you know, dangerous things that are going on here. So what ju- I would ju- suggest to anybody that might be listening to this um, to this broadcast is rather, you know, if you really like Jesus calling and you find yourself reacting to what I'm saying, I would suggest that you go to the Lord and just say, Lord, I'm hearing someone that came out of the New Age who wrote a book. He spent like better part of a year writing a book because he was so concerned. I want to ask you, Lord, James 1, 5, I'm asking you for wisdom. Am I in error? as I read this book. Is this book not from you? And if you clearly ask that, the Lord will convict you. And I think that's something we need to be checking everything out. Uh, the Bereans, you know, were commended for searching the scriptures daily and seeing if these things were so, Acts seventeen eleven. Sarah Young, interestingly, and in, in the whole book, neither she nor her Jesus talk about first John four one testing the spirits. What her Jesus says is you must learn to discern what is my voice and what is not. But then he gives her some very dangerous counsel. Instead of directing her to 1 John 4, 1 and telling her how to test the spirits, he says, ask my spirit 
to give you this discernment. Well, if it's a false Christ, which I purport that it is a seducing spirit, then you're asking a seducing spirit if it's true or not. Hmm. That is not. The testing of spirits is a whole different thing, and that's another whole program. But did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Johanna Michelson, who wrote the book The Beautiful Side of Evil, she came out of the New Age. She had a Jesus Christ spirit guide in her meditation laboratory, and when she confronted that Jesus Christ with 1 John 4, 1, she said it was like her meditation laboratory exploded, and that Jesus Christ left forever. People cannot, if, if a Christian leader, author, or anybody says, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, but then comes in with these other things, like what Sarah Young's done in her book, uh, we've got a real contradiction, and we've got problems. And there's not some kind of a magical wand that's waved because we say Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Matter of fact, there's a uh, man who's teaching really at the highest levels of many denominations, a man by the name of Leonard Sweet. Yeah. And he says in his book, Soul Tsunami, which has a front cover endorsement by Rick Warren, he says to survive in the postmodern culture, one must learn to speak out of both sides of the mouth. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's... And when you look at uh, Leonard Sweet's writings, he calls Teilhard de Chardin, the father of the New Age movement, uh. 20th, 20th century Christianity's major voice. But yet this man is, is really talking at the highest levels of many denominations. Most Christians probably haven't even really heard of the guy, but he's, he's pushing this whole idea of quantum spirituality. Uh, the, the New Age uh, forces that be, the spirit world, is trying to use quantum physics to prove that God is a force that interpenetrates his whole creation. In other words, God is in everyone and everything. And they're going to try to scientifically prove it. And then you look at 1 Timothy 6, 19 to 21. It warns about science, falsely so-called, some of it erred concerning the faith and professing the faith. And right there in Sarah Young's book, um, her Jesus talks about taking a quantum leap. All these things are coming together, Derek, in an amazing way. It looks like everything's coming into alignment, everything's coming into oneness, but everything's coming into the deception that yeah. Jesus warned about in Matthew 24. It, so, yeah, it, there's many other concerns. Uh, I guess um, one of the ones that, that really troubled me was... Um, on uh, August 23rd, uh, Sarah Young's Jesus states that Abraham, Father Abraham, was guilty of idolatry and son worship, S-O-N worship, in regards to his son Isaac. This is clearly not biblical. Listen to what her Jesus said. Remember the extreme measures I used with Abraham and Isaac. I took Isaac to the very point of death to free Abraham from son worship, S-O-N worship. Both Abraham and Isaac suffered terribly because of the father's undisciplined emotions. I detest idolatry, even in the form of parental love. I have a friend who really is not that much into discernment. And he told me, he said, Warren, that statement alone tells me that Sarah Young's book is totally off. He said, that is just blasphemous. And apparently, uh, Thomas Nelson and Sarah Young must have re-examined uh, that passage, because guess what? It's been deleted from recent editions. <laughs> now it's Joseph and Jacob, and it's kind of toned down, and they've just cut and pasted. It's really an insult to, to anybody that really loves the truth, uh, what she's done here in terms of accepting this voice that purports to be Jesus. So um, there, there just uh, are many other terms in her book um, her, her Jesus talks about uh, co-creation. He says, um, well, let me see, I'll tell you exactly what he says. Um, he says, um, this is a very practical way of collaborating with me. I, the creator of the universe, have deigned to co-create with you. Listen to what Neil Donald Walsh, New Age leader, channeling God, says. Yet let me make something clear. The era of the single savior is over. What is needed now is joint action, combined effort, collective co-creation. Co-creation is a term that's used by many New Age leaders. Perhaps one of the chief New Age leaders, Barbara Marks Hubbard, channels Christ. And he says, here we are now poised either on the brink of destruction greater than the world has ever known, a destruction which will cripple planet Earth forever and release only the few to go on, or 
on the threshold of global co-creation where each person on earth will be attracted to participate in his or her own evolution to godliness. So all the chickens are coming home to roost. Mm. And Sir Young's book, like The Shack, um, like many of the things that we're seeing out there, um, are playing into this. There's a merging. We hear about the emerging church. I call it the merging church. Mm. It's merging with all of this deception. It's exactly what Jesus warned us about in the Bible. But unfortunately, people want to have books like um, Jesus Calling kind of tickle their ears rather than to read God's truth and to measure and to kind of discern these things that are coming at them. Just because your Aunt Mary, who's been a Christian for 30 years, gave you the book, and she's a good Christian woman, just like just like the uh, man that you described at the beginning of the program. Many well-intentioned people really feel that this is a book that they can give to people and witness, and it does just the opposite. It basically takes them into a spiritual experience that will align them with a seductive spirit world that will take them into new truths. This is what we're hearing from both God calling and Jesus calling. New truths, new revelations, new understandings, bringing out secrets that just weren't understood until now. No, the Bible is a, is a book that's been around for a long time, and the reason it's been around for a long time is because it's God's truth, it's God's Word. We can depend upon it, but it needs to be God's Word, not some of these new uh, translations and and paraphrases that uh, are so prevalent out there today. Mm. You mentioned the shack, and several years ago I did an interview with James DeYoung, author of Burning Down the Shack, because, uh, again, yeah. it struck me that uh, this is another book that was uh, leading people in, in a different direction. Uh, you also write about uh, the Daniel Plan, Rick Warren's uh, diet plan that he launched in uh, 2011 uh, that brought New Age teachers and uh, people who are involved in occultic practices in to counsel his congregation on how they should uh, become physically fit and lose weight. Uh, this is the, Jesus calling is just uh, another manifestation of a larger trend inside the church, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, like the uh, the book that you mentioned, the Shack, um, the Jesus quote unquote Jesus of the Shack says, "God, who is the ground of all being, dwells in and around and through all things." And then uh, subatomic particles are brought up, uh, fractals, quantum physics. Uh, it's a, you know, kind of an emotional story that uh, grabs almost any reader. You know, this, this man's daughter is murdered, and you know, it just plays along. But then all these false teachings are, are kind of leached into the book. Um, and yeah, and, you know, when I heard that uh, Dr. Mehmet Oz, you know, who says he matriculated at Oprah University. <laughs> um, cardiovascular surgeon at uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, the same hospital that Helen Shookman, the woman who channeled The Course of Miracles, was a um, psychology professor. When I heard that, Mehmet Oz, he's, I mean, he's a total, everything he does is, is, in terms of his spiritual stuff is new age. Um, his wife is a Reiki master. Reiki involves spirit guides. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a body practice that uh, takes massage to a, to a new level of um, being involved with the spirit world. He has front cover endorsements, as does, of um, books by psychics like Ainsley McLeod. Um, he, he recommends yoga, transcendental meditation. When I saw Rick Warren's interview on Rick Warren's website, it was a straight interview about physical health. There was you know, nothing wrong with what, what they were talking about. But then Rick Warren had a link to Dr. Oz's website right on, on his, Rick Warren's website. So I hit the link, and I go to Oz's website. The first thing I see is, New York City, want to talk to the dead? And then next Tuesday, Dr. Oz will be talking with John Edward, who will help the audience channel uh, and, and communicate with their deceased loved ones. So we, we brought that up on a radio program, and guess what? The link went off of Rick Warren's website to mm -hmm, Dr. Oz's mm -hmm. website. And they dropped Dr. Oz from the Daniel Plan book. It's like Dr. Hyman and Dr. Amen. And they, I, I guess they felt it was a little bit too controversial. But Dr. Amen, who purports to be a Christian, recommends in his writings that um, people do a Kundalini yoga meditation right, from right. Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if you noticed, Derek, but the meditation goes like this, Sa-ta-na-ma. And you repeat <laughs> that over and over, Sa-ta-na-ma. Write that down on a piece of paper, and you get S-A-T-A-N, mm -hmm. and then the A-M-A. -A. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's mockery. I mean, for a, a supposed Christian author who's written a book, you know, with a, with a pastor who purports to be evangelical, 
and yet you're doing this kundalini Hindu meditation where, you, where Satan's name is the first five letters of the Satana Ma yeah. meditation. I mean, what it's come down to is that we've lost our way. We really have lost our way as a church. And unfortunately, 1 Corinthians 14.8 says, If the trumpet gives us an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? Our Christian leaders are not sounding the warnings. They're actually moving the church into some of this stuff. Hmm. Um, I'll give an example. Dr. David Jeremiah wrote an excellent book on the New Age with a woman back in 1995. He warned about Richard Foster. He warned about Bernie Siegel, who Rick Warren quotes at the beginning of The Purpose Driven Life. Uh, he said in that book that the New Age worldview is the most dangerous thing that he's seen coming into the church, and he would not cease to warn about it night and day with tears like the Apostle Paul. Well, he has. And just I, I just heard the other day that he was uh, speaking in Florida on, on a radio station, and uh, he quoted Henry Nouwen, a Catholic mystic who says mm-hmm. that God's in everything, and Sue Monk Kidd, a woman who left her Baptist roots and is now saying that God is in everything. Hmm. So, you know, we're being transitioned, if, if we allow the forces that be to do it, into a new Christianity, into a new spirituality, a new age, new spirituality, a new gospel. And again, this is exactly what the Bible said would happen at the end. Evil would wax worse and worse, and then right after that we're reminded that God's Word is what is so important. So we we need to be on our toes, and I think, again, when people hear a, a radio show like this, they could immediately come against you for having me on the show. They could come against me for writing the book. But if they're really wanting truth, they should go to the Lord and say, Lord, is there a problem with Jesus calling? Uh, Are we getting deceived here? Is there something going on that I need to know about? Help me to be more discerning. Lord, I want to know your truth. I don't want to just feel good. I don't want to just have something where I experience something. I I want to be true to you, and I want to know your truth. And please help me to know if I'm being deceived in any way. Hmm. Warren, where do people find a copy of your book, Another Jesus Calling? Well, you will not find it in a Christian bookstore, probably. I would imagine not, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lighthouse Trails uh, Publishing is probably the best place to go. And uh, I usually have their, their number in front of me, and I don't happen to have it right now. Maybe you can uh, I tack would... that on at the end of your broadcast or something. But uh, Lighthouse Trails Publishing published the book. You can also get it on Amazon.com. Um, there are a number of things that we have put online Uh, the booklet, Changing Jesus Calling, Damage Control for a False Christ, and another booklet, The New Age Implications of Jesus Calling, are both free online, and they can be, you know, you can just Google the titles of those um, and and find them. And you can also, if you want to get the booklets to get to people, they're very handy. They help to point out error. And by the way, Derek, we've had amazing responses from people, varying from, uh, Warren, thank you so much for writing your book. Um, I realized I was really deceived to Warren. I tried to give your book to a friend, and she said, why doesn't Warren Smith get a life? He's demonic. So, I mean, there's a real, there's <laughs> yeah, a real yeah. intensity of emotion here, and I would suggest that part of it is because there's a spiritual thrust, and people are getting entwined with that spiritual thrust, and they need to make sure that they're praying for truth. Mm-hmm. The website is lighthousetrails.com, and the toll-free line, if you'd like to order the book, is 866-876-3910. But I'll put a link to the uh, website and also to Warren's personal website, uh, warrenbsmith.com, in the show notes at vftb.net. Uh, Warren, uh, author of, Warren B. Smith, author of Another Jesus Calling, um, We appreciate your work, and I appreciate you taking the time out today to uh, talk with us. Uh, This is important stuff, and uh, we appreciate you standing up for the truth. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Follow the work of Warren B. Smith uh, online, and I'll put links to his websites in the show notes at vftb.net.